Fall in Metal Merc, Trunkletron here, and I'm going to give you a quick start guide on getting started with the Metalcore Open World Alpha. This game just came out for a limited number of people that have an alpha key. There are different ways to get alpha keys, but if you're watching this video, you probably already have one, which is great. I'll tell you how to get yours at the end of this video. This video is not about showing the coolest parts of the game or the epic battles or all the different equipment you can use. This is just to get you started. We have great trailers on our YouTube, on our Twitter, other social media platforms that you can check out the real true scope of the game. But this is a step-by-step -step guide on how to spawn in, you know, explore the game, look around and get equipment so that you can craft your own machines and jump right into the action. So let's get started. I just downloaded the newest update of the version of the game. And uh, this is going to happen quite frequently because we are in the early stages of development. So you will wanna make sure that you're on the newest version all the time. The best way to do that is to follow us on Twitter at Play Metalcore. But first I'd like to show you our alpha page. So this page is metalcore.gg forward slash alpha and this web page is the main home base for all information that's going on with our open world alpha campaign which is divided into three phases phase one phase two and phase three each bringing more features to the game right now we're in phase one as of the recording of this video but if we move into the future phases like two and three the map will get bigger there will be more things to do in the game things like that so you'll see things like this, limited open world alpha server times. This is going to tell you when the live servers are on so you can jump in and loot, craft, and battle. So the other thing that you need to know about is our Discord server. This is really important to join, especially in this earlier stage of development because we're always releasing announcements and you may have questions or need some support from our team members, mods, or other community members, and you can do that on Discord. It's also the best place to get the most up-to-date link to download the newest version of the launcher, which can auto-update the game, things like that. So if you do that, you can see in game download channel that this is here and it gives you more information about getting started in Metalcore. So let's return to the game itself and log in. I'm going to show you the garage first because this is what you'll see when you first install the game. We're in like a main kind of command center right now. And if you press escape, you can adjust your settings. So let's go over here to this gear icon. And depending on your computer, you may need to change these uh, graphic settings here, which function correctly. And as soon as you change to a new setting, it will automatically do that setting. You can also limit your frame rate and you can turn off the motion blur. Now I like to keep motion blur on because it makes my gameplay clips look really cinematic and, and awesome. Like it's being shot with a film camera, which is pretty cool. But a lot of players like to have no motion blur because it gives that more clinical look of being in the video game. So you can really focus on the nitty gritty details of combat. All right. So after you've set those settings, you can also uh, change some audio settings. At the time of this recording, the audio mixer doesn't have memory. So when you relaunch the game later, this may be reset to defaults. So I'll show you a hot fix for this. If you actually on your uh, Windows machine, right click here and then go to volume mixer, you can tell Windows that metal core should be a lower volume, which I've done here. This does have memory. So every time you launch metal core, the volume will be what you said in this uh, slider. All right, so now that we're here in the garage, let's explore what is, uh, what is around this area. This is the console that will launch the live server. If you press E to start the game, you'll get into a quick tutorial video and then you'll be off to the server. Down this hallway over here, you can uh, make your way over to the factory where you can create different war machines and test them out in the uh, testing field or the firing range of the garage. But I like to come up to these stairs and I like to go to this console, which will teleport me right next to the factory where I can create vehicles. Now I won't spend too much time in the garage because we can learn while we're in the live server, which is running right now for a limited time of a few hours. As we move through the different phases, the server times will get longer and longer, moving into even eventually week long stints of running the servers before they go on 24 seven for the main version of the game.
Now, if I press E here, I get into a console where I can see all the different vehicles that are available in this current version of the alpha. The garage offers more war machines than the actual live server does. So for example, I can test out uh, war dog here in the garage, but I cannot make a war dog in the alpha at the time of this recording. However, we will be expanding more unit types as we move through the different phases. So I will start off by creating one of these Zephyr mechs, which is a very lightweight, nimble scouting mech, and it helps me cover ground quickly. A really important thing you should know about the garage, which is single player only, and you can't have your friends in here with you, but it's still great for training. It has some targets that actually take damage that you can uh, use to test your different weapon systems, like my lasers and my grenade launcher. But the really important thing you should know about is that there's actually an AI controlled base right over here. And you can see these orange uh, chevrons, which are telling us that enemies are in the area. So let's head over there. And what I'm doing now is I'm running forward with W while holding down shift to execute sprinting. And then I can even press F on this particular mech and get a speed boost. But the abilities don't function in the garage. They will, however, function in the uh, actual server. Now here I am at the enemy base. I can start to utilize my weapon systems to dispatch some of these enemies over here. I can also press and hold down spacebar to execute my jump jets and get some, uh, some height on my enemies as well. You'll notice at the bottom center of my screen, I have some statistics that are going down because I'm under attack. The first one on the left is my shield. This is important to monitor because it will prevent your health from going down. So I can press three and repair my shields, which will not work here in the garage at this moment in time, but uh, that will execute my shield repair ability. I can also repair my health by pressing one and repair my energy by pressing two. Now this particular mech has some energy weapons like these lasers, and you'll notice when I'm using the lasers, my energy levels are going down but they will replenish after a short time. Jump jets also use energy in order to function. So if you're running a vehicle that has energy weapons and jump jets, you'll need to take into account some extra care with energy management. All right, so now let's actually ex exit the mech and get out fighting on foot. I press X to do that. Now I'm using my jet pack, which infantry also has. It's very nice. And then I can uh, right click to aim down sights and left click to fire my primary weapon. I can scroll my mouse wheel up in order to uh, cycle through my weapons, things like this energy powered sidearm, for example. And then I can also press R to reload my weapon when I'm out of, uh, out of ammo. Now, if I get, if I get killed, uh, I will actually get knocked down first as is common with many other games and I will start bleeding out. There are different infantry classes that allow uh, revives to take place. Like a medic has a revive gun that can revive me. And now, now I'm bleeding out, I will, be de I will be dead soon. So I will press spacebar to uh, meet the sweet release of death early. All right, so this concludes the garage. You can try out different vehicles, uh, lots of different ones. You can engage with the AI enemies at the other end of the field that I showed you. Let's launch into the live server. Pressing E to start. Soldier, welcome to Kalani. We will be deployed into battle momentarily. In this region of Kerberos, you will find enemy faction bases, bandit outposts, and a wealth of materials for collecting. Faction consoles will offer missions. Complete these to get rewards and gain experience. As you level up, you can craft new war machines and characters. Domination events will occur periodically. Work with your faction to secure the control points and dominate the region. Scattered outposts and bunkers can also be captured. Some can be used at respawn locations. Now as you train into battle, select your class when prompted and be ready to fight. All right, so here we are in an alpha session and we're looking at the map right now and the map has different points of interest, like for example, bunkers and other areas during a domination event, you'll see 
alpha, beta, and gamma critical points appear on the map and controlling those for different amounts of time will lead the, the battle in your favor or your enemy's favor, depending on how well you can hold these positions. Over here on the left, you have different loadouts for different infantry units. And you can see here that we have our light infantry that we were using in the garage, but I was also able to unlock a medic recently that can heal my friends, which is super useful in combat. The way that I can unlock these characters is by looting and collecting resources and materials in the game. So let's start off with a light infantry and deploy that. And you'll see here that we have spawned in our main base. So our main faction base, at least for this particular game, is uh, the Holy Corp, which is one of the four factions in the game. This console will allow us to sell items that are in our backpack, our, our locker, our inventory. And then we can get fab tokens for that. However, because we are in the testing alpha phase, this is not wise to do because there is no utility for fab at this time. So our goal is to collect materials for crafting war machines. Now this console allows us to get different missions. This is a very common game mechanic that you'll see in many games. You can uh, do like little side quests and then get extra rewards as bonus. So we can accept all of these missions by clicking on each and then clicking accept mission. And now it will tell us about the mission that we're on in the top right area of our screen. So let us uh, go outside of the main base now, which is protected by an important anti-camping shield. And it looks like we already have some players in the server with us, both allies and enemies. Now in the alpha sessions, uh, you're able to actually spawn a vehicle right away without crafting. It's called the ICV Rico. And this is a very nimble, uh, lightweight tank that uses hover technology that will let us get around the map a lot easier than usual. So in this tank, just, just like the mech I was using in the garage, I can move forward with W, rotate my vehicle with A and D, and slow down and go into reverse with S. I can also hold down shift to execute my boosters and move a little quicker throughout the map. But as we couldn't see in the garage, we now have special abilities. This tank allows me to press F, which will execute an extra speed boost. You can see that on the, off the back of my uh, rocket boosters there. Now you'll see here I just engaged with a bunker. This is an AI controlled bunker. Player versus environment gameplay. It has a turret on the top that I need to take out. And I'm clicking down on the left and right mouse buttons in order to fire both my primary weapon here and my secondary weapon here. We'll need to get out in order to capture this bunker and turn the turret towards our side of the fight. So I pressed X to leave my vehicle, and then you'll notice that AIs are dropping equipment on the ground that I can pick up and use to create my very own war machines. Now that I've collected all of the materials, I'll need to enter the bunker on foot, and you'll see in the top middle port of the screen, the bunker is uh, transitioning to our control for our, t our side. Now we have uh, acquired this bunker by way of this green circle showing us it is ours. And when the turret respawns at the top, it will shoot our enemies, not us. Let's get back into the vehicle by pressing E and make our way to an important critical point, which will have really great equipment that we can get and bring back to base so that we can create war machines. This is the first stage stages of the game. It's more of a scavenging and then returning to base with the spoils of your missions. This is called a spawn bunker, which is a little different from the uh, lightweight bunker that we attacked earlier. With this particular bunker, I can spawn uh, at this location so that I can be farther ahead in the battlefield uh, instead of spawning at my main base. We're gonna need to take out these AIs right here, and I'll notice that uh, that my shields will be able to regenerate after a short period of time. So this is similar to other games such as Halo, but I can also press three to restore my shields if I get into a bind. So I am now inside the spawn bunker capturing this and we look at that green bar in the top middle. Great, now myself and my friends can spawn at this bunker if they die in battle. We also got some extra loot, which I can view by pressing I. And now I see in my backpack, what do I have? There's different levels of loot and they all combine together in different recipes to create war machines. They also have different rarities. 
and uh, even the elusive iron slices are, are very sought after in this game because they're required to create very powerful war machines and they're quite hard to come by actually. So you'll need to do proper inventory management because your backpack can only hold a certain amount of weight and then you have to return to base. Right now we're making our way to critical point gamma and it looks like our friend Sith Kitten over here and I can zoom in by holding down alt on my keyboard left alt Sith Kitten has already captured this uh, area for us, which is great. Now you'll notice the automated turrets have us in our sights. So let's take out this turret with our primary and secondary weapons, holding down left and right mouse click. And now they're dead and we've protected Sith Kitten on her way back to base with her loot. All right, let's exit our vehicle and make our way into this base. Now inside the main base, you'll notice that there are loot boxes. They're glowing blue. Sith Kitten already looted this one, no problem. Let's continue on. The loot boxes will replenish with extra loot if they're empty after a certain number of minutes. So you can return to a box that's empty and see if there's more loot to be gained later on. Here's some additional loot that we can grab. So let's put this in our backpack by clicking on all these items. We can also click on take all, which will empty it out if our backpack can sustain that extra weight. Now, while I'm in the field, I can even press I and then click on loadouts. This will allow me to understand what recipes I can work towards in order to unlock different war machines. One of the first entry level mechs that people like to unlock is the Zephyr that we saw in the garage because it's very lightweight, it's very quick, it can make its way around the map quite well, and it can dispatch of AI enemies with relative ease. I can also use my jetpack to navigate around this space and go into the different levels. There's actually some loot boxes right here and right here that we can check out. So let's jetpack up onto this catwalk. And let's turn on our flashlight if it's hard to see by pressing T. Pressing E to open this loot box shows us some items that we can grab. And we can refer to the recipes that I was talking about earlier so that you know which items are most important to you. Here's another box. Let's get some gold snips. And it looks like we cannot do that because our backpack is full stuff. If we press I, you'll notice here in the top right that we are over 30 kilograms of weight. So our only option at this point in time is to make our way back to base. So let's get back to our vehicle. So this is the front entrance of Gamma, and we parked our vehicle at the rear entrance, but that's okay because there's a factory pad here out in the field, and we can use this factory pad to summon our Rico at this new location. Just keep in mind that you uh, can be killed and <laughs> put under fire while you're doing this process. All right, now that we have all of our stuff, let's make our way back to base. We're gonna press F to execute our extra speed boost. And we're holding down shift so that our tank can uh, go a little faster than usual. All right, we're navigating around the terrain. And now we've entered our base. Now, you heard there a small ka sound. And you saw in the top right of the screen, which has disappeared now, a message that says that our loot has been deposited into our locker. So let's prove that and exit our vehicles here. And then let's go over to the factory. And we can see here on our way to crafting our Zephyr that yes, it's true. Some of our items are in our locker and we have enough of certain ingredients, but we're still missing a lot of other ingredients such as copper slices and copper slivers. So if your goal is to craft one of these Zephyr mechs, this recipe is telling you to go out into the battlefield and locate copper slices and copper slivers and bring them back to base. Critical point 
What's really cool is that you can enter your base inside your vehicle and it will auto deposit all of your equipment into uh, your locker and you don't have to get out of your vehicle or do anything else. You don't have to execute uh, anything inside the base or access any control panels. All you have to do is drive through your base and drive right out right away. Then you can go out and get more stuff. Now be advised, there may be enemies crawling around that want to take your stuff. And if they detect that you're on your way back to base, they might say that you have a lot of great loot that they want. And so you should be uh, very careful. You may need to execute your invisibility cloak by pressing four. Now my tank is invisible. It cannot be locked on and uh, players will have a much harder time detecting me. It looks like we have some enemies here at beta. Let's see what we can do to take out these enemies. My shields are down. Let's press three to regenerate those. Oh, we are almost dead. I'm gonna press X to exit my vehicle. There it goes, time to get out. At this point, I would get on voice chat and cry incessantly to my teammates to come get me and pick me up, especially if I had important loot. But it looks like I'm too small of a, of a threat for this aircraft to deal with anymore. Let's replenish my shields by pressing three and let's get into this fight. Now I'm bleeding out, I'm in trouble, and I'm dead. Let's continue the process. All right, it looks like I've been detected as a threat here on the map, so Players will probably be gunning for me while I'm trying to acquire all these items. Let's get into a fight that's a little bit more fair and learn a little bit more about combat mechanics. Holding shift, W and pressing F. We're driving uh, past one of our friendly bunkers now. You can see that. That bunker's on our side. As well as this spawn bunker as well. Let's learn a little bit about this right here. This, this is a repair pad. And I can stand on this repair pad and it will heal my vehicle without using any of my cooldown abilities. Now it looks like the player that killed us earlier is in our sights. So let's see if we can hunt this player down. They may get stuck here in the crystal fields. This is quite na difficult to navigate, especially on these vehicles. It looks like this player has almost made it back to their base. And if they do that, the, their, uh, their loot will be deposited into their locker and we won't be able to get it. But if we were able to kill that player, then we could get all of their loot because it will fall on the ground after they die. Just press three to heal my shields. It's important to keep monitoring your health and shields during a battle because pressing it at the right time can be the difference between life and death. Now I'm capturing an enemy bunker that's right next to the enemy base, which I find to be hilarious. So I'm doing that and I'll be able to get all this loot that's on the ground as well. But first I, I really wanna capture this, this bunker because it will have friendly turrets that can help me if uh, an enemy detects me while I'm looting that stuff.
Okay, great. Now we have that bunker. Let's get this equipment right here. Let's see if there's any more that we missed. All right, looks like we're all set. Let's get back into our vehicle and get out of here. Oh, there's some right there. Come on, get it. There we go. Okay, perfect. Great, so now we're back in our vehicle. Let's go look for another adventure to get into. Remember, time is of the essence because all the players in the game, they really want to get better war machines and equipment to fight with. So you really want to try to stay on the main task of getting important items that you need to craft things. Right now, I'm attacking a neutral factory. Uh, this is a small outpost that has a factory pad that allows me to summon war machines in the heat of battle or if I'm stranded. It's really important for teams to have control of these neutral factories because anybody who gets caught on foot or if their vehicle is destroyed while they're inside of a critical point looting, they need access to an escape vehicle. And these neutral factories really provide that access quite well. So let's capture this factory for our team. And then let's loot around and see if we can locate some boxes that we can, uh, we can peruse for items. Okay, great. So now the factory belongs to us. Let's explore this area as uh, loot boxes can be found where there are AI enemies and you never know where they might be located. In fact, there are many great content creators that uh, Metalcore has partnered with that will be putting out really helpful videos and helping people live during streams to talk about things like where cool loot boxes are located, uh, which items are the most important to be looking out for at all times, and what to do when you get into a sticky combat situation. As we can see right here, uh, there's a loot box that we can look at here in this neutral factory. And it looks like we have some osmium slices that are epic. We have some copper cores. We have some gold snips and slivers. Let's just take as much as we can. It always helps to have a recipe or a main goal in mind when you're doing this looting, as I was mentioning earlier, so that you don't weigh yourself down with stuff that you don't need right away. Because as you, uh, as you level up and get more war machines to fight with, it will become easier to navigate the map and get even more stuff later. So instead of trying to do everything at once, you might want to set one main goal and then set the next goal after you've achieved that goal. There have been some players that have even been able to uh, craft entire spider mechs, which are massive, massive combat machines. Uh, they were able to do that by focusing on the main task of just getting everything they need for that specific vehicle. It looks like we were getting attacked by the AI turrets. I'm not too concerned about that. What I am concerned about is Captain. Captain is inside critical point alpha. We're going to try to take him out and take control of this critical point for ourselves. This is going to be a sticky situation. Let's get into it. It looks like some AIs have discovered him. Let's throw a grenade by pressing G. Finish the job. Uh-oh, I'm in trouble. I am dead. Nice work, Captain. Now, when you're getting into these, these fights, it definitely helps to have friends. But decision making is also equally important because if you already have some pretty cool stuff, that may impact your decision on whether or not you want to engage with an enemy directly. You might want to make it back to base with the stuff you have and then look for a fight afterwards. Once we get more advanced equipment, I can make more content that shows you how to use each type and what to do in various combat situations using various war machines. But for now, this is everything you need to know to get started with Metal Core and looting and crafting your way to domination on Kerberos. Thanks for joining us, Metal Mercs. Catch you next time.